Hi, everyone. I am Ivory Zorich, the Director of Strategy for the Live Events Coalition. LEC is a 501c6 organization and was created to provide support and resources for the industry, as well as lobby on behalf of this group during this trying time. This session, as all of our webinars, are recorded and will be posted to our YouTube channel after each call. While we wait for folks to join our call, I wanted to go over a few small disclaimers and housekeeping notes before we get started. Please be kind and understanding to others. We will not allow anything less than kindness. Please avoid self or company promotion on coalition webinars. We are a nonpartisan organization and ask that you respect that and all opinions, even if you disagree. Please continue to support each other and our industry through this tough time. We need one another more than ever now. While the coalition members are trying to share as much information as possible, situations and information change from day to day, so keeping up can be challenging and we appreciate your patience with us. It is the policy of the Live Events Coalition to comply in all respects with federal and state antitrust laws. Discussion of any matters relating to competition among our attendees or relating to practices that may restrain trade with third parties is not permitted. These prohibited subjects include prices, allocating territories, boycotts, or any other statements that may be construed as anti-competitive. And finally, please note that while the coalition members may offer ideas and advice, we are not legal or financial experts. Our panelists may be experts. However, the information shared may be different from your unique situation. And we advise you to reach out to your own lawyer, accountant, banker, or business manager for expert opinions and advice. And now I'll turn it over to Nancy. Hello, everybody. I hope this finds you well, enjoying summer and where you are. It's not hot and humid like it is where I am. Um, thank you, Ivory. So today we have a couple of new updates for you. But what I want to do is I want to, again, say thank you for your ongoing support. Um, without you, we are not an organization. Remind you that we need you to give us your information about what you might want to see and might want to hear in future webinars. Um, <clears throat> and that you are appreciated and we really, really do work for you. That is our job and we are very humbled and honored to do it. So today we're gonna start with a quick update on government affairs activities. And Wendy Porter is going to take that on as our wonderful Dwayne today is off in the mountains of Montana taking a much, much, much deserved vacation. So take it away, Wendy. Thanks, Nancy. Um, so as Nancy said, I'm stepping in here for Dwayne who is on a much needed vacation. So we hope he's having fun. He's completely off the grid, which is great. Um, updates from the government affairs team. So we are continuing to have meetings with our members of Congress. Um, as many of you may know, they are on recess this week. Um, and they are also actually on recess most of August. Uh, so looking at the calendar between now and the end of the year, there are actually only 10 more working weeks where Congress is actually in DC working on legislation. So um, I just want to kind of put that out there that unfortunately our, the calendar is not our friend at this point with what's happening in Congress for the rest of the year. Um, but we are continuing to work hard to try to make inroads with the right people um, to still get something done for us yet this year. Um, we have had almost 100 meetings so far with members of Congress and we're at about 90% penetration in both the House and the Senate. Um, small business committee, and we continue to meet with them. We're circling back now with most of those folks, um, just to say that, you know, we still have a need, um, continuing to emphasize our talking points. But now we're also focusing on the bu budget committee, um, because they are key to future uh, legislation getting passed, mainly because um, of how this is probably going to play out, which is in reconciliation. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But the budget committee is key to the conversation as it relates to reconciliation. Um, I just want to remind everybody, we've talked about this in the past, that, you know, we're new, right? We started this organization in, in April of 2020, so we've got about 14 months under our belt at this point um, working together, and um, the NRA, the National Restaurant Association, has been in place for 102 years and have eight paid lobbyists, and that is why 
they were able to get some legislation passed and it took them 10 months to get it done. So we have spent you know, the last 14 months really educating members of Congress on who we are, how big our industry is. Um, but unfortunately it is a really big lift because they simply really didn't know who we were before we started our conversations with them. So that's, that's part of our challenge. Um, our talking points have shifted a little bit um, from what we're hearing from our, our colleagues um, our lobbyists and others, the staffers with the members of Congress, um, Congress is really done talking about relief and even talking about recovery. They want to put COVID in the rearview mirror. So in their minds, we, they've moved on. And I know that's hard to hear as an industry because we have been so devastated. And for us, um, the pain is still here and we are opening much more slowly than other parts of our economy. But we are shifting our conversations now to a different word to try to make it a little more positive. And we're talking about investment. Investment in the future, investment in our economy, investment in our states, um, you know, that events are the economic engine that fuel a lot of our economy. And we all know that, right? We're sort of the hub. You have an event and then that brings in people who come to the event and then they stay at hotels and they stay at restaurants and they shop and they travel and they fly and they use Uber and they use taxis and whatever. The, the ripple effect is huge. And so we're trying to help educate them that really we are in a lot of ways central to um, the economy really getting rebooted. And so it's still super important that they invest in us they invest in our, in our companies and our small businesses to help us stay afloat so that we can continue to fuel that economy going forward. Um, quick update on the EBC, which is the um, Economic Bridge Coalition that we've talked about in the past. We are now at 13 members now of the coalition and more are coming in week by week. Um, this week, we actually added a new one called the Custom Tailors and Designers Association, which is the oldest continuously operated trade association in the United States. Um, they represent manufacturers, suppliers, and retailers. Um, it's a highly specialized industry that employs um, 10,000 retail associates, 3,500 people in manufacturing and wholesale, and 500 on the supplier side. They make uniforms for the armed services, police, and other essential workers. And they also work in the costume industry for the theater and um, business wear for professionals. So they definitely tie into the events industry. Um, the other members of the EBC are the American Rental Association, of course, the Live Events Coalition, the American Society of Travel Advisors, IAAPA, which represents the theme parks, family entertainment centers, museums, water parks, et cetera, the International Council of Air Shows, the Outdoor Amusement Business Association, the International Association of Fairs and Expositions, Professional Photographers Association, the American Horse Council, Specialty Equipment Market Association, which is um, working really in the auto industry. So things like NASCAR and those types of things, the performance racing industry, the National Ski Areas Association, and one other photography association that's just coming in now. So we're getting a lot of um, good traction with that. And the more entities we have working together to message out to Congress, to meet with Congress, to tell them our story, the better. Um, as far as legislation, so, and I know Dwayne sort of addressed this last time and it wasn't great news, but here, here it is again. So PPP basically is dead. There is no third round of PPP coming. So we need to kind of move forward and pass from that. SVOG is in the works, as many of you know, the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant that was passed back in December and it's literally taken them until about two weeks ago to start distributing that money and that is still very much active. Um, but we don't believe that we will be able to get any kind of amendment to the SVOG. It's going to stay as it is because of all the challenges that they had administering it. So um, that is not something that we can hang our hat on. And so, and then the third thing is the infrastructure package, which many of you have, uh, if you've been following the news, know that that is Biden's next plan, which is coming out here. It's a $1 trillion package, but that really is going to be focused on physical infrastructure. So bro roads and bridges and things like that, not so much on people infrastructure. So it's very unlikely we're going to be able to tag on to that package as well. So our best shot at this point is getting into something called reconciliation. And reconciliation is something that happens very rarely. Um, there have only, it's only gonna be allowed twice this year. They've already done it once. So it's one more shot at it this year, likely late this summer. And that is a situation where we need 51 votes in the Senate to pass um, the packages in reconciliation. And it's mainly done through the budget office. Um, so it, it's a, we have a shot at it. We think, unfortunately, we think it may be a long shot, but we're gonna continue to push hard 
on that and trying to get something into reconciliation. Um, and what, what we're gonna try to hang our hat on is, is an expansion of the restaurant revitalization fund. Um, as many of you know, that fund was stood up in March. Um, it was around a $29 billion program. Uh, pretty much the funds have been exhausted at this point. And the NRA is going back now and asking for 50 billion more to be added to that fund. Um, and then we are also at the same time asking for another 50 billion to be added that would be focused on the rest of the small businesses in the industry that were left out of any of these other packages. So that is what our focus is right now. Um, we've got letters right now into um, Nidia Velasquez's office out of New York. She is the chair of the House Small Business Committee about that. And we are awaiting feedback on our requests from her. We also have letters in the works right now um, that we plan to submit hopefully in the next week or so to President Biden asking him to get involved with Congress potentially having a meeting with us. And we're gonna have two letters going in, one from the EBC as a whole, and then one from the Live Events Coalition directly. I also have a request right now into Congressman Phillips, who is one of the um, reps from Minnesota, who led a House hearing, um, say about a month ago, as it relates to all the hiccups that we had with SVOG. And I'm asking him to hold a field hearing in Minnesota in August when they're on recess um, to talk about the funding that is still needed for small businesses. We're awaiting feedback on that, but I'm hopeful that he will take the lead on um, getting something like that organized. We are act uh, actively working on members, meetings with members of the budget committees, as I mentioned, um, because we do need to get them on board with the reconciliation activities. So we're gonna be reaching out to Congressman Yarmouth of Kentucky, and then the chair of the Senate is Bernie Sanders from Maine. So we will be reaching out to the two of them and others on the committee, and we will be rallying constituents from those states. So if we reach out to you, um, past folks that have participated in calls in Kentucky or Maine, um, we do intend to, to reach out to you again to um, pull you into those calls as necessary. We also have plans to do some more grassroots activations to really put pressure on Congress in the forms of letters and phone calls. We'll be putting together templates that you can easily use to push this information out to your elected officials and to make phone calls. And then my last point I wanted to talk about is a little bit of progress on the national press front. Um, we had a meeting about two weeks ago now with a producer of CNBC, um, which was a great conversation. She actually met with us for a full hour, which I was just thrilled with that she took a full hour to talk to us. We shared our full story. We shared all of our infographics and, and documents and details. And she is now um, talking that through with her team um, in the hope that we're gonna be able to pull together a story that's gonna run on CNBC, um, either in the, on the website or on TV or both. Um, right now, she said they've been really distracted with the Miami story. So that's what's holding things up at the moment. Um, the, the condo collapse in Miami, that's really been um, the, the, in the news cycle for the last two weeks. So hoping I can get with her again today and try to get something on deck, hopefully for next week. Um, other updates, we have a survey that's gonna be in the works here soon. Uh, we wanna kind of get the feedback from the field from all of you here on this call about how things are going since our last survey, which was last November. And then we're also talking about doing some focus groups to really fine tune our messaging and making sure that we are representing you as the membership correctly in our talking points with everybody that we're speaking with. So we'll be pulling together some focus groups coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Would love to have you participate if you are able and willing. Um, also, you know, there are definite concerns right now with variants. Many of you, I'm sure, have heard that the Olympics today made an um, announcement that they are not allowing spectators at the Olympics. So we're seeing a contraction again. Um, oftentimes what we see is, you know, the big events make a change and then other smaller events start to follow suit. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the coming days related to that announcement. Uh, we did have a win, though, that I want to pass along as it relates to ARP funds, um, the American Rescue Plan funds that were sent out to the states. So Oregon actually had a big win uh, last week, and they were able to get $50 million allocated for a targeted grant program in the state of Oregon. So that's awesome news, and we're um, anxious to hear how things are going in your state. So we'll be asking our state leaders to send in more information around that to capture other wins in other states. So in, in conclusion, um, what I wanna say is, you know, please just don't give up. Um, there's a small but really mighty group of people here behind you that have been fighting really hard on your behalf for the last 16 months. 
And we really, really need everybody to renew your membership, ask others in the industry to join the Live Events Coalition, because we really need these funds to help continue to pay our lobbyists who are working hard on our behalf. And without your membership, we really can't, can't keep doing what we are doing. And we aren't giving up and it's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. And so we're gonna continue to push hard and stay strong and keep fighting. And we ask you all to do the same. So um, that's my update for today. Any questions that I can field right now? Let's see, seeing a couple things in the chat. Yeah, some of our live events industry have, has squeezed into SVOG, but small amounts of money, much less than 45% promised. So not excluding SVOG awardees from the expansion of our RF is important. Agreed. Yep. Yeah, SVOG has been really interesting how that's rolled out. And, and it's, it's um, I think they've only distributed. Last time I looked and we haven't seen a recent list, Nancy, unless you have. Um, I think the last list we saw was end of June and they had only distributed at that point like 1.3 billion of the 26 billion or 28 billion. So there's a lot of work yet um, still to come to get that money out. Anything in the other questions, Ivory, that I'm not seeing? No questions submitted to the audience. Okay. Do any function. So Nancy, if you wanna go ahead and wrap up. Absolutely. So the one thing that I do want to say, and I think it's really, really important to reiterate, reiterate it. Wendy said at the top of her report out, we all get a little frustrated that the American Restaurant Association got so much attention. Two things, they're a 102 year old organization. We are 16 months max. Number two, they are a highly, highly well-funded organization and they pay eight lobbyists who that is their career. It's where they were before the pandemic and it is where they will be after the pandemic. I could not be more impressed by our government affairs team of Wendy, Dwayne, Chris, Dewan and several others who 16 months ago were not lobbyists, not even close. I live in the city. I'm not a lobbyist. I don't understand it. I know more today than I have in the 30 years that I've lived in the District of Columbia. What we as an organization have done is remarkable, but we absolutely cannot give up, as Wendy said, and we must stay strong. We need to build our membership and we need to make sure that our government affairs team has the tools that they need to make all these asks and that our actual paid lobbyists have the information that they need. So when you get frustrated, which we all do, that says, why is it taking so long? There's probably three answers. Number one, because the government moves like slugs, period. They're going to go off. We've watched it for 15 months. Oh, we're going to go on vacation. We're like, great, we can't afford to pay our bills and you're going to go on vacation. Number two, we are learning this. You've heard Dwayne say this. We are learning to fly the plane while we are flying it. But I will tell you, I think that we are some of the most exceptional pilots that I've ever met. And number three, as Wendy stated, People don't understand who we are, what our ecosystem is, how important we are, why we are the economic engine, why what we do touches absolutely everything. So I ask that each and every one of you stay focused, stay committed. I would love for you to ask three other people to become members. If you know larger folks who want to become sponsors and really partner with us, please, please do so. This is a small but mighty team that's working behind the scenes for all of us, but we need each and every one of you. So a couple of wonderful things have happened, um, and I'm going to have the honor of welcoming two of those wonderful humans who have decided to jump into the fire with us. Um, and one is Julie Fedenkoff, and Julie is our Director of Development. And the second is Nina Parsons, who is our chair of membership. 
Um, and I'm going to ask them both to kind of give you a little bit of an overview of who you are. And then I'm gonna come back and let you know what, how you're going to work with them and how you're going to get together with them and us make us so successful, people are gonna to have to stand up and say, oh, we know what live events are and we know how important they are. So Julie, can you give everybody just a quick little intro on who you are? Sure. Thank you, Nancy. I am thrilled to be here. I stumbled upon um, LEC randomly on Facebook somewhere. Um, and uh, not more than a few days to a week later, I ended up being on a um, on a Zoom with um, with one of our representatives and Wendy, and it just kind of snowballed from there <laughs> in a very positive way. So I come from the um, music industry side of things. I specifically am a sponsorship director for large scale music festivals. And that is uh, my passion and where I live and um, obviously a massive part of the events industry. Um, a little bit different perspective, um, probably than most of you being in the music side of things. Um, but uh, I love having a different perspective and a different voice added into things. So I'm really excited to be a part of this amazing team. And um, if anyone does have, as Nancy mentioned, um, if anyone does have larger companies or you know even mid-sized companies, anyone that you think that would like to partner with us, please, please, please feel free to reach out to me. I am happy to help foster those conversations um, and get you any information or details that you need to, um, to move forward with them. Wonderful, Julie, we can't be happier to have you with us. Um, and as she said, I will put their emails actually in the chat because they both now have um, Live Event Coalition emails. And please reach out. From a sponsorship side, one of the things that Julie is bringing to the table is that we will look at these in a customized way. So it's not uh, check the box here and at this level, this is what you get. Um, anybody that works in sponsorship, whether it's in live events, concerts, anything, brand, whatever it may be, the gold, silver, bronze at those higher levels and you get these things don't work as well as this is what you need, great, let's make that work. So know that we will work with some of those um, larger contributors to make sure that that relationship is beneficial for both of us. Um, and then it is with great pleasure that we welcome Nina Parson, who is going to, is our membership chair. And um, I want her to share with you a little bit about her background. And I will tell you that we're very lucky to have both of these amazing women on the team. Nina, can you share a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I'm super excited to be here and be part of this team. Um, I am the director of sales and marketing for a company car limousine. So I'm in the chauffeured car service. I found out about the live events coalition because Nancy spoke at our local Ilea chapter. Um, and I was just inspired by everything that was being done. And I love the advocacy. And I'm one of those people who's so passionate about helping the live events groups as a whole. And I just knew I needed to get involved and become a member. So when I heard that they were looking for people to take the role of membership, I was like, I must do this. So um, I am our, the ILEA president for the Cleveland chapter, and I'm involved in other different parts of the event world in different groups. And I thought this is a perfect opportunity for me to merge people, to get people to come together as one. And so we all can be heard as one voice as opposed to 700 of us, <laughs> 700 different voices from 700 different groups. Um, so if you, as Nancy mentioned earlier, if you can, you have someone individually who wants to join or refer people to join, please send them my way. I love to chat with people about what we can do and what a membership provides um, all of us in the event industry. So I look forward to meeting more people and you get any suggestions, thoughts, or things that you want to see as a member on these calls, please. And we're going to be sending out an uh, email where you can do a little survey and let us know because I want to make sure we're speaking to you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hyacinth has her name, her hand held up. Um, Ivory, does that mean that we open it to her? Because I don't know how to do that. 
I can bring Hyacinth, I can bring you on screen. Just one moment. Wonderful. Hello. Hello, Hyacinth. Hyacinth, for people that may not know this, is um, a member from Kentucky. And nope. wait, Hyacinth, where are you from? Texas. Texas. Don't tell Kentucky that I miss <laughs> Texas. Definitely don't tell Lori. Um, but she's very active with us and she also supports a lot of the work in our government affairs. So take it away, my friend. Um, I, I apologize because you probably asked me to say something and I was letting my dog back in the house because she was crying. And so if you don't mind repl um, repeating that question, I would be happy to take it away. The question was, you raised your hand and did you have something that you wanted to say? Well, um, other that, than that an accident. <laughs> it been an accident, but I would say it's great seeing more people join national as much as I would love to be a part of it. I felt like my time was better spent state wise just because of the amount of time I have, but everybody's time is so precious right now. And, and for the time that you're devoting, thank you so very much. Um, we still have a lot of work to do, but I am impressed with just as you, Nancy and Wendy said, working um, 16 months to achieve what we have as, as a very small but mighty team is hella impressive. Uh, and I can't wait to see how far we can get uh, in the next year. Absolutely. So thank you. Thank you, Hyson. Um, so a couple of things that I'm going to do. I'm going to, in the chat box, give you both Nina's email and Julie's email. Um, many of you, if you have been a member for a year, are probably in your renewal period and we would love to see you renew. Um, bring a couple of friends along. I know I have a goal of how many members I would like to see by the end of 2021. It is slightly different than the rest of my fellow um, board members and I would like to prove that we could get to that. So just bring as many people as you can. <laughs> I'm an optimist. I understand and believe in what it is that we do. Um, and I think that we are beyond important. So a couple of the other things that we kind of wanted to talk about today and just make sure that you guys were aware of were some of the benefits that you may or may not know exist. Um, we have gone back to our healthcare provider and reworked that program. So these are member benefits. There is a wonderful array of healthcare programs that you can join. Um, we have added a mental health group that is offering our members a 30% discount on tele mental health services. Um, we have virtually yours, which is our amazing virtual assistants. Um, Julie can attest to that. And um, in addition to that, we have Terry Sapp, who is our bookkeeper. And all of these folks are giving discounts to our members. You do have to be a member. Um, but if there are other things that you would like that you feel would be valuable as a benefit, we'd like you to share that with us. And if you have an organization that would like to offer a benefit to our membership, please share that with us. Many of you have heard me say, some of you may not. Our objective with who our member benefit companies are, are really about our industry as businesses and as individuals who operate as independent contractors, which are technically a business, um, as well as our W-2. So we're not really looking for some of the benefits that our other aligned associations offer, but these are things that are really going to help you grow your business and grow your brand um, so that we are all stronger professionals as we continue to move forward. So I would ask that anybody, if you have a thought, an idea, we're currently looking at business insurance, such as liability, um, and we're constantly looking to see what could be of value to each and every one of our members. Um, let me see, I'm looking at my agenda. Nina, am I missing anything on that at this point? 
No, I think you look good. Awesome. Um, so the only other thing that we're doing is, I don't know if you guys know, but we will have a booth at the Cater Source special event in Miami. It is the 19th to the 23rd. Um, and so we will have a booth there. If any of you are attending, please reach out and let me know two things. I want you to come by the booth so you can introduce yourself. Sometimes it gets really hard because we, you can see us and we can't see you. And so I love to know who our people are. Um, and if you would like to come and stand in the booth with me and tell people why the Live Events Coalition is important, I would love to have you. So um, let me know. Um, we're really, really excited um, about our first in-person um, exhibition and trade show. I think it'll be very exciting to be with people and, you know, will give us an indication of how things are moving forward. Um, other than, than that, I'm going to add in the chat the two new emails for, okay, there we go, um, for Nina and for Julie. Um, before we wrap this up, I see lots of conversations going on in the chat, but is there anything that anybody has questions about, concerns, ideas, thoughts, any of the above? Dawn? Uh, I read Dawn. Kagan has raised his hand. Can we bring him up? I don't see him with his hand raised. Oh, all right. Dawn, did you have a question that you want to put in the Q&A? He put in the chat, it was an accident. Oh, it was an accident? OK. So I, Not think, I think we can wrap up the webinar. We can. Let me get those two emails into the um, email box. You know how quickly in the chat, you know how quickly I type. And it looks like there's also a question from Mark, Mark Clark, I believe. Yeah, the question was if we advocate for digital event production businesses or just brick and mortar. And uh, yeah, we advocate for all event companies, whether they are virtual, hybrid, live, anybody who's in the event industry, we would be advocating on your behalf. Here's what we tell anybody. So if you have a question, this is gonna answer your question. If you have anything to do with a live event and we describe a live event as something you're given, you buy a ticket for, you're given a ticket, you're invited, or your boss tells you you have to go, live or virtual, mm -hmm. that is a live event. And if you have anything to do with any of those, then you are part of the live events industry. The ecosystem reaches 12 million people in our workforce, every single one of them. And our voice is for absolutely everybody, no matter who you are. So live, virtual, hybrid, whatever the future has, we're here for you. Yeah, so should we, um, we could quick cover off for those who might be new to the call, the six different verticals that we support. So mm -hmm. it is the corporate side. So trade shows, consumer shows, sales meetings, anything that's a corporate event. Um, the production or the performance side. So live theater, dance, opera, music, any of those areas, the personal private events. So weddings, bar mitzvahs, um, you know, graduations, any of those kind of private type of functions. Um, what's the sporting events? And that would be non-professional sporting events. So we're not talking about the NBA or the NFL. We're talking about the local marathons and the rodeos and the team sporting events, those types of things. Um, let's see, I don't have my vertical in front of me. Nancy, do you have your vertical handy um, of the, the thing you're printing right now? I'm missing some in my, I'm doing this from memory. Uh, oh, um, nonprofit galas and fundraisers. And then there's one more. 
that is escaping me at the moment. Nancy, did we lose you? She's there. I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened either. <laughs> Cindy, if you don't mind wrapping up the call, I think we're all set. Sure. All right. So thank you, everybody, for joining. And we will do this again um, next month on this the same, the second Thursday of the month. Um, and we welcome Julie and Nina to the team. Excited to work with you guys. And uh, like we said earlier, continue to stay strong and keep your voice loud. Keep fighting. Keep talking up Live Events Coalition to your other colleagues in the industry and encourage membership. And we will keep you updated as, as things evolve and we will continue to fight on your behalf. So thank you for joining today.